Okay, today we are talking about SPSA and TensorFlow Quantum. SPSA is simultaneous perturbation stochastic approximation is what it stands for. It's an algorithm for noisy uh, updates and it's very popular in the quantum uh, machine learning world. Uh, the main reason why, there's two reasons why it's popular. First of all is that uh, it's designed for noisy evaluations and you know, we have a lot of noise. And the second reason is that the gradient update is sort of like finite difference uh, in that you're sampling uh, perturbations. However, the sample you only draw two per update. So it scales O of one with the number of parameters, which is very appealing. Uh, because you don't have to do as many circuit evaluations. So uh, SPSA has been in TensorFlow Quantum for a little while. I actually wrote that implementation that's in there. Um, and so I thought I'd go through it. I made a few changes locally though. I copied this file just from the, um, the TensorFlow Quantum source code for uh, the version that I'm working on. And uh, I just copied it. Everything's the same up here. All I did was added logging functionality and changed one parameter. I made a PR in TFQ. I don't know if it's going to be approved. I don't know, even know if TFQ supported it at all or maintained or anything like that, but I'll, I'll link that below. So make sure uh, you use that PR. Basically, the only difference is that this parameter is now a 0 0.1 instead of a 0 0.01. But basically, you can see SPSA, uh, you have this iteration that you're doing. So you generate random perturbations, you scale them by some parameter, and then you estimate the gradient based off of this. Uh, and then what you can do is you take, of course, this is a gradient estimation. So you just do your position minus your gradient. You take a step in the direction of the negative gradient. Um, now you have these rules for updating the learning rate based on the number of iterations and the maximum number of iterations that you're sort of uh, dividing this by. So this will decrease as you go along and you have perturbations um, that you can see are also uh, adjusted. But as um, you know, as this uh, gets bigger, the perturbations will decrease. So basically, of course, the learning rate uh, goes to zero and the perturbations goes to zero, obviously over an infinite number of iterations. And so the only things I added were uh, a um, way to keep track of the logging information. So this is the exact same SPSA algorithm. I just added a, a value here rather than just keeping track of the state, you have a value. This value you can see is defined Right here, it's just a named tuple that contains a variable. I don't know why I did it this way. It was just easy to easy to work with. Um, it contains a named variable that is just a uh, the history, which is just set to be zeros. Um, so what do we do to work with this? Well, we add this as a loop variable that then gets uh, returned uh, in a similar way that Jack sort of enforces uh, types and like shapes across loop, uh, lax loops. TensorFlow has a similar sort of rule. Uh, TensorFlow also does not support uh, index updates, which is surprising. There's a very long issue if you look online about this um, that I'm kind of surprised it still hasn't been done. There's like a PR and everything, but you can't update. There's no way you, like if you try to do if you try to edit this variable, it'll throw an error. Now there's ways to do this in PyTorch, there's ways to do this in JAX. I think this is a point of pain that I'm surprised has not been fixed, but in my case, it's okay because if we set everything to zeros, we can just add whatever our objective value is and, and it'll just work. Um, so we can do a scatter add. This is a very jank implementation. And then you the scatter add requires index slices you know, this is just TF wizardry right, right here, magic, I guess. Um, and this is the value that we want to add, which is this G objective value. And this is the index, which is what iteration we're on. So that's basically it. Uh, SPSA, right? We have this 
perturbation, we take one set of random samples that we scale and then we estimate the gradient from. It's really straightforward. We do some learning rate scaling and some perturbation scaling over time, right? We want to decrease those over time and we iterate. And so uh, this is also, I should mention, adapted. Um, this is I, as an inspiration for uh, what problem to use. I just took from the penny lane tutorial. Uh, they, they really do have a great set of tutorials. I'll, I, I will give them that. And so um, this is sort of what we're looking for here is just working with uh, some simple um, optimizer uh, to optimize just this generic product of Z uh, operators. So the first thing you do is you'll notice this is sort of a very similar thing because I'm recreating exactly what's going on there. We have our standard set of imports, TensorFlow Quantum, TensorFlow, etc. cetera. Um, then we have this strongly entangling layers that I stole the name from Penny Lane, which is just a set of single qubit rotations on every um, qubit and then uh, entangling gates. And then we can make our model. So we just take this circuit we make a parametrized quantum circuit TensorFlow object out of it that uh, we set for 1000 repetitions to draw samples from it to estimate the expected value. And we initialize it to this random normal, which is the exact same as uh, in that example as they have mean zero, standard deviation 0 0.1. So basically we just create this circuit, which is just, you know, uh, a standard almost hardware efficient style circuit plus uh, random initialization, random normal. So now we have to write our update rules. So we first have the machine, uh, the model that learns via parameter shift. So we have our typical, this has been covered many, many times, our typical updates. And uh, we use stochastic gradient descent as in the uh, penny lane tutorial. Uh, we say uh, we're just taking the gradient uh, of this just a direct output. So we take the gradient, we apply the gradients using this optimizer, and we keep track of these energies. Uh, and if it's, you know, if we've reached a minimum, we can break. And that's it. That's pretty standard training loop. Um, we go through our number of iterations. This is a little bit different. So you can see here, if you wanted to use the TFQ implement implementation currently, you would call this function. But because I uh, wrote my own logging code, you can see that's what I, I've imported from here. But this, would, this is sort of a one-for-one -one replacement. You would just have to get rid of these logging informations. So we have our input is the same, an empty circuit. We have our function that we have some uh, evaluation we're doing for. Specifically, this is the, basically what this function is, is this. We have this function but we want this as a function of parameters explicitly, right? Like this is updating the parameters because the model is sort of keeping track of them. But here, this is a function of the parameters. So we set the parameters and then we return the, the evaluation of those parameters. So the initial parameters are of course, just a uh, the random normal uh, with standard deviation 0.1. Um, and here you can see the important thing is that uh, alpha, which is uh, used in basically determining, you can see here exactly how it is, but it's used in determining the learning rate updates. You can see right here, there's alpha, there's a gamma, which we just set the default, and then perturb, which is um, this perturb initialization. Uh, are very important hyperparameters. So is this learning rate. And this is this uh, learning rate is this uh, learning rate initial. And a common way that Penny Lane sets it is that you have 0 0.05 times the maximum number of iterations. So this should actually be 300, but uh, times 0 0.1. So 10% of the maximum number of iterations plus one to the uh, alpha power. And this is something previously I thought my SPSA implementation was incorrect because it would it would do really poorly in a lot of situations. But as I found out, selecting the right hyperparameters is very important with SPSA and you can get huge param or performance swings depending on these parameters. Um, so that's just worth noting right away. 
So then we have our standard, we have wires, which is the same as qubits. So we have four qubits, five layers. We create our qubits, we create our operation, which is the product of the Z on each of these qubits. And then we uh, create our models. One of them is the um, SPSA optimization. The other is the gradient. And uh, they're initialized to be the exact same. You can see I hard-coded the seed. So don't worry that they start from different parameters. Um, we train them. So we do the optimizations here, and then we uh, want to plot the results. So important to note that we're not plotting against iterations of the optimizer, we're plotting against circuit evaluations. So uh, SPSA takes two circuit evaluations per update, whereas parameter shifts takes 2p, or two times the number of parameters, updates. In the case of us, our number of parameters is the number of qubits times the number of layers times three, because there's three parameters on each qubit. Um, and so this is uh, this is the actual right um, number of circuit evaluations that we're doing. And so you can see when we plot this, um, how to get to the same performance, we can see SPSA converges much quicker. If you look at like iterations, like each dot is it update iteration, you'll see this will be much stretched out. Um, in fact, I can do that right here, right? If I just do, um, if I just do, we just plot the uh, iterations. You can see <laughs> this is this is not circuit evaluations. This is optimizer iterations. You can see this takes much longer, but that is because we do not care about iterations uh, when circuit evaluations is really what we're doing, right? Uh, the the classical part of the um, optimizer is trivial. I mean that's nothing. That is an uh, extremely fast operation. Uh, the hard part is the circuit evaluations and obviously the more circuit evaluations are the more money we have to spend on all that or the more noise we build up you know there's there's lots of things that can go wrong the more you evaluate your circuit and so this is just a sort of quick tutorial on how to use spsa um, if you want logging i will of course this jupyter notebook will be uh linked below as will the the spsa will be in the same github link that i that i put below so you're welcome to try it out uh, if you don't want logging and just want the final results, use the existing implementation, but make sure to check out my branch. Um, I'll link that PR uh, below as well, because I think you'll notice, you know, some uh, changes in the uh, performance. So anyway, yeah, that's just a quick intro to SPSA, the Stochastic Perturbation Simultaneous Approximation, I think. <laughs> Hopefully I'm getting that right. Uh, optimization algorithm for quantum circuits, which is pretty common. And you're welcome to check it out in TFQ.